Hey, what's happening YouTube and Reddit? Uh, today I'm excited because I get to show everyone how to uh, treat um, Valisneria. Now I have a lot of videos and a lot of them that have already been put out have are over uh, plants that have been uh, basically cloned in auger and you know very small plastic packages that you'll find at big chain stores and that's because I've had no choice. During the winter, I like to buy plants, but during the winter, I can't order any from a farm that actually grows plants underwater. Now, the reason why I prefer that over these um, uh, the tissue cultures that are in the auger, the plants, what happens is, is it causes dwarfism, which can be good or bad. It depends on how you look at it. So, like, let's say you want to buy some red cryptocorns at PetSmart. Well, they're going to sell you a little plastic bag. Uh, which I have done a video on those before. And what happens when they're grown in that auger, it's loaded with a bunch of sugar and the bag is uh, loaded with the amount of CO2 and oxygen needed for several weeks. Now the plants start to grow in there uh, from little seedling. And whenever they reach the top of the bag, the plant assumes that it's reached full size, full capacity. It tells itself, hey, I can't get any larger in this. This is all the CO2 and oxygen that's in here and all the nutrients I'm going to have for the rest of my life. It just assumes that. And then when you take it out and you're acclimating it into your tank, it causes dwarfism. You'll notice that over a couple months, it'll lose all its leaves and grow new ones. Well, the new ones are now aquatic leaves. The old ones were grown immersed, um, you know, and those all die and just float off and disappear. And then it grows the new aquatic plant that it does just fine. And it'll only reach a few inches, um, which is okay. Like if you want to do a carpeting plant of of uh, different types of crip, like at Petco, you they sell. They're usually really good at keeping stock of uh, green winty, which is green crips, uh, cri uh, cryptocorn parva, all of these things. You can if you have the money and you want to spend like sixty bucks, you could carpet an entire tank with like dwarf sized cryptocorns, which is pretty awesome looking. I did do a spot in here. That's all red undulatas, which is red crypts. So it just looks like a blanket of that. But I wanted to do something that will grow really, really tall that's rooted. And that's Valisneria. I ordered this from Aquarium Co-op. But there's a lot of places you can order this stuff um, online. If you go to Amazon, you'll find any random willy-nilly do. But anyway, so I wanted to show you what they look like when you get them where they've grown submerged. And what they'll look like when they come packaged to you and what you should do to delicately take care of them before you plant them. This is a root feeder. It grows really tall. It, people like it as a background plant because of its size. So here it is. I always keep a bowl of dechlorinated water to set it in. So it's a little, you know, plastic cup. And inside is, you know, this green spongy stuff. And uh, you're going to pull all this out. These don't slide out as easily as the auger, but all right, here we go. So I got the plastic cup off, and then I have some tweezers. I'll just start digging at this. There may be more than one plant in here, so I'm just kind of checking out the roots, seeing what it looks like. And it's okay if some of this stuff gets in there. It will disintegrate over time, but the problem is if, if any of it is stuck to the roots, it can cause root rot. Um, which is really bad. Once root rot, rot starts happening to your plant, um, there's no turning back. It's the, when the roots die, that's the end. I mean, everything up top, this can all die and it can grow back from nothing except for a couple roots, but you want to make sure they're not suffocated and saturated in this green stuff. And the same with the auger, just as much as you can get it all off. And you want to do this process really quickly. Um, you know, they're in shock, and you're telling them this is their new spot. You're not going to have to go through this again. So you want to make sure it looks like I got two in here, which is great. Um, there's some soil. I'm going to try to get as much of that off as I can. And then you want to trim the roots or any, any foliage that's just like completely brown and dead. Leaves can't heal themselves. So if it's yellow or it got holes or, you know, all of that, just go ahead and get rid of it. So it can spend its time sending all the nutrients to the good stuff and then regrowing the stuff that you've trimmed off. 
All right, that looks good. And also make sure your hands are clean, obviously. Wash your hands really good. Make sure your net, you know, whatever you've touched is going to get absorbed through these roots. So you want to stay away from that. Um, all right, so here's a pile of roots. I'm going to trim the tips of all the bottoms. And then when I'm planting it, I can kind of make like a, you know, like a spear like this. So I can stick it straight down and the roots will spread out as they're going in instead of the roots folding upwards and you're going straight down and you see roots sticking up. You've got them in the wrong direction. They want to go down and off to the sides. They don't want to go up and to the left and to the right. So uh, here I can see there's a, a little rhizome tip that I'm going to snip. These will send out runners. These grow really, really fast. Um, here's another so it's essentially, when it gets full, it'll look like really tall, grassy, freshwater seaweed, which is really nice. And it, it grows super fast, and this is the last thing that I wanted for this big tank, which I do have awesome news. I've got another huge tank project I'm going to be starting soon. I've already got the tank, the stand, so after a couple months, I'll have the rest of the stuff, and this tank will be fully grown in, and we can check it out. Right now, as you can see, there's some... Uh, well, you can't see. I'll get a closer look, but I'm acclimating some shrimp. Sad face for the orange Neo Caradina that I found dead when I got back from my trip. I didn't notice. He just died. And just so you know, shrimp, uh, ex especially Neo Caradinas, can't tolerate a change in pH more than 0.2. So for me, what I did is I, I actually tested the water. Um, at the store I got them from. I saw what their pH and everything was, their general hardness, all of that stuff, and then I compared it to mine. So if I notice there's a drastic change in pH levels and all of that, then the drip acclimation is gonna take a much longer time. I mean, driplets of water, and yeah, I've learned this the hard way. If you watch other videos, I've killed shrimp, and this is because I didn't even have calcium in them. Well, now I know they'll die if you just dump them in after an hour or two and just swap out the water. You truly want to take your time and slowly, all day, replace all the water that was in the bag with the water from the uh, tank. Very little at a time. This should be an all-day process. Shrimp, they freak out out of nowhere and just will instantly die. Anyway, we're getting off subject, so we're talking about my valison area. Uh, all right, so I've trimmed it. I've got it. It's ready to go. Some fresh dechlorinated water or just use tank water. And uh, I'm ready to put this in the tank, and I think you've got a good view of where you'll see I'm putting it from where it's at. And I'm not going to use tweezers for this, I'm just going to nudge it in there. Alright, and then I've got another one. I mean... You don't really need a close-up. I'm not going to hold the camera and show you, you know, a close-up of me sticking it in the dirt. But essentially, I'm just holding it like a spear and letting it go in. And then I use my other hand to, to bring dirt around it. So this one I need to trim also. Again, this is called Vallisneria. It gets really tall, like 14. Um, can get 14 inches or even longer once it reaches the surface. What's great about that, instead of growing out of the water, it'll fold at that point and start to cover the top of your tank, which is great. It makes your fish and everything feel secure, like they're truly in their own, you know, safe environment, which is why I have so many floaters also. And uh, this is a whole low-tech, low-light uh, setup. So the more floaters I have, the brighter the tank, the brighter the light I can have because it has to push through. Um... But so far, out of all the plants that I've had, and this is, I'm on month two, I've only had one plant truly die on me all the way, and that was one of these red uh, cardinalis, cardinalis. I always say this wrong, man. I, I'm sorry. So, it's a red stem plant. But anyway, besides that, everything is growing. I mean, there's a really long, let me get a close-up here. If you can, if you can even see these long skinny stems, some kind of crisp apuntogen growing right there. It's really long and skinny. You can see it right there. And uh, hygrophilia in the back. There's several Amazon compactas. These are all of the um, cryptocorns. Sorry about the algae. I do got to leave some for the shrimp because shrimp, they like to eat it. These 
crypto corn piles that I said, like like I said, you can carpet with these, the ones that have been um, tissue cultured in auger, but like I said, they're not going to get very tall, you know, so I need some taller plants. These Amazons are the Amazon compactas, uh, so, you know, they only get about maybe five, six inches at the most, and I can go really high, so you see the hygrophilia is growing super tall, and then over here um, are all my rhizome plants, so there's a lot of um, different species of Anubias and uh, Java ferns, and I've done videos on all of these to show how to attach them and plant them and all of that, but everything's going great. I wish I could just catch a random shrimp for you and let you look at them. I've got so many. Uh, they're all neo uh, caradinas except for one bamboo shrimp, which is always hard to find. But there's some crystal shrimp in here too. I'll do another video on that. But anyway, if you if you uh, found this video, um, I hope it helped you. You know, with what to do. You know, nobody showed me how to do a lot of this stuff. You know, I learned through trial and error, and this is a hands-on thing. And my goal is is that somebody watches it and says, "Oh, okay, hey, thanks. I didn't know that." You know, in the future, I will, I will do that so I don't potentially accidentally kill something. So, and just so you know, you could have everything perfect and things could still die on you. So just keep that in mind. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, have a great day. Again, that is an area. I can't wait for that to grow in fully and start my next video for my next tank setup. Thanks again.